So today happens to be day 1463, uh, which means I've done this for four years now. I have squatted every day for four years. <laughs> that kind of sounds funny when you say it like that. Uh, I don't, I don't quite know how that makes me feel. Uh, I'll say this, I wouldn't have known until one of you guys said it in the comments, probably a few days ago. It didn't even occur to me. These numbers are completely arbitrary to me. They don't mean anything. They are literally just uh, numbers. Uh, but when you pause and you say, gee, a year is a long time. I remember that, I remember one year, the 365. I remember that vividly and uh, how that felt. And uh, I remember thinking to myself, I'll oh, just, it's a good time to stop. It's, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit more and then stop. Uh, I kept having this dialogue with me. And uh, to be honest with you, I never really had an explanation of why to quit, you know, why to stop. Uh, you know, just feels like it's not really a big, big effort. <laughs> uh, the way I approach it, the way I have a connection to it. It's a fun thing to me. It's very intriguing. Uh, it's good to exercise every single day. It's good to be active. I feel better emotionally, mentally, physically. Uh, I feel like I'm pro more productive throughout my day. Uh, I feel like when I go to sleep, I've achieved something. There's many, many benefits to it. You know, I've spoken to this many times before, trying to pick apart a lot of these different aspects that I kind of have, uh, let's say, become addicted to. Uh, but I think the, the most important thing here for me is that it, it, it's a habit and it's a very healthy habit. And uh, simply, uh, it's a challenge to me. I feel really good. Even I remember the days when I was doing 12 hour uh, shifts, you know, uh, long, long days at the hospital. Only started this year, I stopped that. So for the majority of the, so three years, of this more than three years of this have, have, have you know i've done that you know waking up at 4 30 in the morning uh training at five five to six you know six uh just before six 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 fifteen get ready and go to work uh, i did that for years and i remember feeling crap a lot of those days when i wake up 4 30 especially during winter it's freezing the bar's cold everything's cold i'm there rugged up with freaking jackets and whatnot i remember a lot of those days but I also remember how it felt walking away from those training sessions you know feeling unbelievable feeling like i was a freaking navy seal like i was a you know unique uh specimen like i was felt great man felt like i was professional felt like i was playing for an nba team i remember like the feelings when i used to play basketball we would go you know preseason runs on the sand dunes uh, at the beach uh you know early hours and you'd run in in, in the pack of the boys and I remember feeling like, you know, we're special. We are the special ones. I remember feeling like not a lot of people can do this. Um, and then when I stopped playing basketball, I lost that. You know, I started uh, training when it was convenient to me with the majority of the population. You know, you go to the gym at 6 p.m. Everyone's doing the same damn thing, chest and back and you know, all that kind of stuff. And I started to feel normal again. And, uh, and maybe that's a good way to say it. I don't, I don't like feeling normal. I like feeling abnormal. I like feeling like I'm doing something extraordinary because I don't want to be ordinary. Um, in whichever way you can manifest that, just try and do something that's, you know, beyond the standard deviation, the bell curve. Because uh, ultimately, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being normal and being the, the, the average, but that never really s attracted me. Uh, I always wanted to be better. And I'm not afraid of the pain, the discomfort, the, the hours, the sacrifice, on social life, on relationships, or whatever the case might be. And uh, I kind of realized that when I met my wife and we started a family, life became very simple to me. Very, very simple. It became, you know, go home after work, you know, take care of the family, do your chores around the house. And then there's like an hour or two every day that you can kind of go about it. So there was structure purely for that, from that, having a family. Before that, it's like, okay, let's, let's go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and get drunk. You don't have to, but you can, and I did. Early, early, my early 20s were like that and try and having a, a routine through that no 
I gave up my basketball you know, dream. I think it was, I was 20, something like that, 20, 19, 20 years old. I saw that I couldn't become a professional basketball player, so I let that go. And then after that, there was no structure from basketball. There was nothing. And so between 20 and 25, I was just like running around drinking and partying like, like everyone else. Oh, it's Friday, man. Where are we going to go, man? You know, where are we going to go? Which part are we going to hit up? Let's pick up some chicks. That kind of thing. Um, everyone's different, but I got bored of that really quickly because I started to feel like I was a uh, normal guy, you know, wasting my freaking time. Uh, if that was so good, then all of these people that I was going out with and drinking alcohol with and meeting and all of that, we'd all be somewhere really special one day. But I never felt that. I felt like I was, don't get me wrong, it was fun, but always in the back of my mind felt like, well, that's another freaking night wasted. And the next day, because I'm freaking recovering from Bacardi shots. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, all in due time, like those experiences were very, very important for me. Uh, and at 25, I bought my squat rack at home. Uh, what you guys see here, bought it. And with that, I feel like I bought discipline. I bought structure. I bought, you know, I bought a mentality. You know, uh, first I put it in my garage in the first house that we lived in, very tiny garage. I could barely freaking do overhead presses with, in, in that thing. Uh, you know, I uh, reversed my S15 out of the garage, parked it in front of the garage. And that was kind of a, a big moment to me that, that, that weights are taking a precedent of, precedence of, of, you know, from, from uh, the car. So that the weights are more important because the, you know, the car's not getting sheltered anymore. So that was a, a seed that I planted. And all of a sudden, every time I'd walk past the freaking garage, or open the door, I'm like, damn, let me do a set. And then one, one thing led to another, but ultimately uh, when I turned 25, that was a big, big moment in my life, you know, buying the weights. And then when I turned 27, uh, shortly after that, I became a father. So uh, those two things is, was what made me. And then you kind of go into the whole family life, the structure there, structure here. You, you read Matt Perriman's book, you read uh, Pavel Tatsulin's book. Uh, you learn about John Bros, you learn about uh, Ivan Abajayev, Abajayev you, all these guys all of a sudden start to form as individual. Here we go. Um, uh, I, I guess if, if, if you're wondering, you know, how the hell did I do this uh, structure? It's structure. It's not, I, don't, I don't like the word discipline. I don't like the word um, discipline because it implies that I'm fighting some horrible circumstance it's not this is just a habit and my favorite freaking quote that i wrote right on top of that rack you know we are what we what we repeatedly do excellence then is not an act but a habit aristotle wrote that there was some conjecture about that but whatever that was the first uh, author that i read it from so i'll stick with that well there's some people that think it belongs to somebody else uh, but that, that's it, it's a habit, and it's a healthy habit. It, uh, it makes me feel like I'm doing something in my life. And I know that sounds crazy, right? Because I'm doing lots of different things. A lot of, all of these different things are driven, I feel like, by multiple other facets. You know, the families, me and my wife. Right? My, my wife and I decided to do this, and we drive each other. But this thing, I feel like it's, in a way, my little project on the side even though I'm benefiting from all the other structure that my family has provided me with uh, I feel like this is my little kind of project on the side and uh, I like that so four years um, I don't have any freaking alcohol here but maybe that's a good thing but I'll, I'll drink to that so cheers to everyone that's kind of uh, followed me along these four years uh, Cheers to you if you've been inspired by me and you've taken some things from this journey. Uh, and hopefully you've made some progress in whatever aspect you deem progress to be. Because uh, ultimately this is all an individual journey and I never, you know, I never think something like this can be a failure uh, un unless you look at it through a lens of, you know, you look at it through a lens from another person's perspective. You know, I've grown in the last four years. Um, and cheers to that, man.
because I'll tell you one thing, man. In the last four years, this kind of thing, um, man, my mind's racing right now. This thing will outlive me. Um, uh, that's a powerful, powerful thought. Uh, you know, my kids will be able to watch this as they grow up. They'll be able to see themselves in these videos. They'll be able to see my evolution as a man, as a thinker all my thoughts, I'll be able to come back and reflect on these moments. Uh, and I think ultimately that is, that is the best thing about all of this. Um, I'm a fan of history. I'm a fan of uh, journaling. I like looking back and as uncomfortable it can be to read your own text and read your own thoughts, because maybe today you're a bit more clever than you were three years ago. So it can be kind of silly to kind of see your own mistakes on paper but I think uh, it's very, very beneficial. Um, so it's four years, but uh, I feel at home. I feel like I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. Um, I never thought it was gonna be like this. Never thought I was gonna do something like this. So um, lots of lessons, man. Lots of lessons. I think that, that, man, there's so many things I want to say, but I don't want to drag this video out. I'll, I'll say this, and there's many thoughts, but I'll say this. Um, I think the key to longevity is not having expectations. Um, just rock up. Rock up and flow. Um, flow is a nice word. That kind of feels right. A lot better than discipline. Flow uh, summarizes this, I think. Wake up, come here, see what's up. Say hi to the weights. Say hi to some of the movements that you like doing. See where it takes. If it doesn't go, stop early. If it goes, push further. And, uh, and longevity is going to be there. I think longevity suffers when you don't listen to the body and uh, you push through something that the body's trying to tell you not to. That doesn't mean you don't work hard. You work hard, I've had some freaking hard days, but I've followed the internal dialogue. Anyway, um, I feel like my brain is thinking much faster than my mouth is uh, speaking. So I'll end it here. Uh, about today, yes, I did train, uh, did some cleans, worked up to hundred again, felt tired from yesterday for all the, from all those singles. Then I did some front squats and then I uh, got to my bench press. That, that's kind of the highlight of today. I worked up to 135, uh, which is 90% of my max now. And, uh, I did that for five doubles. So I was expecting to hit four, but it felt a little bit better. Then expect us, I did five. So next time, maybe I'll do six or seven and I'll try and uh, keep pushing. The elbows are still feeling really, really good. So I've struck some sort of a balance in my training and I can just keep on pushing. I don't know whether you guys see, but I, I feel like my elbows are beefier. I don't know. I don't know if, if, if you guys can see that, but I can definitely sense that. So I added some weird muscle around the freaking elbows uh, with the freaking hammer of all things, it's making me feel really good and benching is feeling incredible. So once again, uh, thank you for sticking around. If you've been sticking around for so long, four years, I certainly have stuck around for four years, which is incredible. Uh, but let's keep it rolling. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.